Hello and welcome to ET Brand Equity presents The Big Leap, powered by Clevertap. I'm your host, Gautam Srinivasan, and in this special series, we bring you the inside story of brands that dare to take that big leap in growth and manage to retain customer loyalty despite the odds. These are profiles in courage, ingenuity, and innovation that separate our 12 winners featured on the show from the rest of the pack. So it's time for you to meet the best in business. First up is a brand that has captured the hearts and minds of millions of viewers across the far corners of India and beyond. Acquired by Times Internet in 2018 as a video player and transformed into India's leading content super app, housing a host of blockbuster shows, an expansive music collection, a wide variety of games and viral short videos. This is the one, the only MX player. Delivering content for the masses while also bringing in a global flavor to the mix. And as we speak, expanding to more countries worldwide, MX Player has managed to redefine the OTT space while delivering much of its top-of-the-line content for free. Expanding to premium services while even giving users the option to watch now, pay later. MX Player looks all set to capitalize on its popularity to leap forward in its bottom line. So in the story of growth, it seems, picture abhi baki hai. So let's find out how MX Player manages to keep over 275 million monthly active users hooked to their screens and the next frontiers in customer loyalty left to conquer. Please welcome Nikhil Gandhi, COO, MX Player and Porush Elavia, Director for Growth Marketing at MX Player. <laughs> Gentlemen, great to have you with us and looking forward to understanding more about that MX player growth story. But before that, uh, Nikhil, I believe you are a fitness enthusiast. So from an individual perspective, you know, if you consider yourself as an entrepreneur, how do you sort of balance business with fitness and build yourself up as an individual to take big leaps? So thank you for the introduction, uh, Gautam. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I have an anecdotal memory of how my fitness journey began and I think uh, you know, it is after my kids that I realized that I have to be more fitter to keep them engaged in their activities and I think uh, fitness really drives better relationship with yourself and with every uh, you know, uh, milestone that you achieve, you are always trying to beat your previous milestones. So in some sense, game theory sets in. And uh, I think it's important because it keeps you energetic, it gives you new thoughts, ideas and just like uh, our dynamic business at MX, uh, it really adds a lot more to create new opportunities and value for the business and for our consumers. So keep yourself fit, keep the company fit. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Porush, let me ask you a question. We are talking about a video streaming service. So if you had 24 hours with you and if you could binge watch any series, which would that be? Uh, well, I would actually tell you a story about what actually happened, right? So mm -hmm. right after I joined MX, uh, there was this amazing show which was very different from all the sh shows that we had at, at MX already. So people uh, who know MX by, they know shows like Ashram, Bhokal, Raktanchal, very big shows, very good shows. Uh, but we launched a show uh, which was called Campus Diaries. Uh, a very different genre of show, uh, a very college life, college kids kind of show. Uh, loved that show and that was actually the first show that I watched after I joined and uh, I did actually binge that uh, within the first weekend. So if, if time permits, if I, if I have the luxury of doing that, I would definitely like to kind of re-watch and re-binge -re that show uh, from the MX ecosystem, right? And if you, if you ask me from anywhere else, if, if you'd like to watch another show as well, uh, I would say one of, one of my favorite shows was uh, The Sopranos. So if time is there, I would definitely want to watch Sopranos and uh, just get get learnings from from that again, right? So that that was an amazing show. All right, I'm I'm already hearing the soundtrack woke up this morning as you as you as you hark back to those golden days of television. But nostalgia is a powerful factor, and going back always has a certain appeal. You know, when you recollect how things started and how you have progress so far today. So Nikhil, let me ask you about the origin story and that X factor of MX player because 
when it was bought, it was, as I mentioned, it was a video player, then it transformed into one of India's leading uh, media streaming service, becoming a super app in a sense, combining music, uh, short videos, and your big shows, blockbuster shows. So tell us, what is that X factor which allowed MX Player to take that big leap, uh, especially in becoming the favorite of audiences? I think it's a great question. I think, uh, you know, unlike any other video service, uh, we truly believe and we've developed ourselves into becoming an entertainment destination. If you look at all forms of entertainment, whether it's uh, video consumption, whether it's OTT, whether it's games, short video, audio streaming, podcast, we have it all under one roof on MX Player. So I think uh, uh, the X factor for us is that one is we have a huge base of users, not just in India, but globally. Our OTT business is the second largest engagement driver for us on the platform and many of the other verticals that we have developed is only on the back of the fact that we are probably one of the only apps globally that have an organic download with a huge number of more than a million users per day. And that really provides the edge uh, for MX player over the other players in the market. So that was one. Second is, I think we've always invested in deep tech. And being a tech-first organization, I think our, our overall strategy is to drive more better user experience, whether it's the design, whether it's UI, UX, whether it's the machine learning and the recommendation system. And also the fact that we've deployed other strategies to create more products and more engagement opportunities uh, and more value for the consumer. Uh, we've always kept the consumer first. We've always designed our uh, product experiences on the back of research. And I think we've seen a great amount of success in most of the uh, opportunities and the new initiatives that we've launched. The recent one being MX Live, which is a live streaming service. And I think uh, without doing much, we've been able to see great amount of scale and thanks to the organic base of users that we've got. All right. And speaking of a customer first approach, let's also try to understand your audience because MX Player has always gone for a mass appeal, whether it's in terms of the shows or whether it's in business models. And MX Player as an app is available in one in every two smartphones in India, which accounts for nearly 300 million monthly active users. So I want to understand more from you about, say, the unique audience characteristics, since you also cater to many, many diverse regions, many diverse audiences. Take us through the audience profile? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, right from the beginning, we were clear that uh, when you looked at the video service uh, and we saw the base of users, we were just not a metro phenomenon. We were uh, uh, a tier two, tier three, uh, right down to the rural villages. Uh, and I think uh, it's a dynamic mix of users. Uh, uh, it's also syncing well with the spread of smartphone uh, uh, in, the, in the country. So I think, uh, and like you mentioned, right, one in two users. So everywhere you see a smartphone, you will find MX Player. And I think uh, uh, within the big universe of users, we have a sweet spot, which is the 18 to 24 year old olds, uh, male and female both, which are the larger consumers uh, and engagement drivers for us. And I think uh, after that, we have the secondary user, which is the 25 plus user. And I think uh, the way we've designed our services is to cater to uh, different cohorts of users. And we talk to them in uh, uh, different languages and we uh, you know, serve them with different services on the basis of their uh, preferences and their usage patterns. All right, let's expand the conversation to understand more about the value and personalization aspect. I believe in an interview once, you said that free is not an offer, but it's an emotion for Bharat. Now, considering Indian audiences are still very value conscious and they have, say, single daily limit for recharging data, I want to understand from you, how do you make sure that precious amount of data that they have is something which MX player leverages and uses? How do you bring them or make them keep coming back to you? And how do you personalize at scale when you do that? Yeah, so I think one, uh, uh, you know, DNA that we believe in very strongly is that India is predominantly an enabled market. Uh, and I think YouTube has demonstrated this globally at scale. Uh, we are uh, proudly the second largest uh, in the video universe to have, you know, gone down that path. and. Uh, unlike YouTube, which is UGC, we are uh, providing curated content, uh, whether it's games, whether it's uh, you know, web series, whether it's content. Uh, and so I think uh, 
there are two, three aspects that we have created to drive consumers to consume more. Firstly, we are the only app to have uh, deployed the H.266 uh, compression technology, which enables you to consume more content at 70% lesser data speeds. Uh, no, not, not data speeds, data consumption. So I think the that value proposition for the user is extremely, extremely uh, valuable. The second one is content is free. You can play a game for free. You can watch the biggest premium shows for free. You can live stream for free. And we've, we've, we've kept a very clear mix of opportunity of creating advertising. Uh, and we believe that India has grown up to watching a lot of ads on television predominantly. So this is not a new phenomenon for us. Uh, and we've seen the, the take rate from consumers who have great appetite for consumption, uh, which is why we, despite the kind of uh, uh, services that we have and uh, the fact that we serve ads, we have an engagement rate uh, or a watch time per user per day of 56 minutes plus, mm. which is comparable to any large television uh, uh, you know, entertainment channel. Uh, in fact, more than that. And I think it's very encouraging to see the users who have this appetite. Uh, we have providing them value. And, you know, very recently we went out to launch our subscription service and we've kept the price points in a, in a manner that uh, is, is, is within reach uh, affordability for those who don't want to consume ads uh, while, while they're experiencing us. So free, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, for, for us uh, and for Bharat uh, and for anybody here, you know, free is, is actually an emotion. The moment you offer something free, uh, whether it's a hotel or an airline or even uh, an OTT app, uh, it's, it's cre it creates a great amount of emotional value for the consumer. And so we've always played on that emotion and uh, we've seen a great amount of success. And you've done it smartly. It's free with value. It's not free for free sake. It's free Absolutely. for value. All right. Now let's get in some leadership questions. And especially when we look at the scale that you guys have grown up and the amount of data that would come in, you're a tech first organization, as you mentioned, the risk sometimes can be that there is too much redundant consumer data coming in, which can sometimes cloud leadership insights, you know, getting insights from that data. So I want to understand from you, how do you make sure that the data is working for you as a leader in terms of understanding your, uh, your uh, users, user segmentation and reducing churn especially? So uh, you're absolutely right. I think the way we've designed our overall approach framework is on the back of deep data. Uh, so there are three, four levels of data that we examine. One is the periphery uh, which is the narrow data that we have. Uh, but when we go deeper, we get some really strong insights uh, of what users are actually doing. All sorts of data and, and, and the way we've designed the organization also is that every function within the organization, outside of the data analytics team that does the larger heavy lifting, every individual department has their own data analytics teams, which design a go-to-market framework based on data that is getting consumed and then do a forward forecasting of how consumers would probably behave, whether we launch a new show or a new service or a new product. So I think uh, uh, data is very important to us and we've, we've always uh, uh, kept that as the forefront of all decisions that we make uh, for the business. Absolutely. And you can also mass delete customer segments for bringing in new segments because audience profiles also keep changing, right? Absolutely. And I think uh, users use MX for various different purposes. Uh, for example, on our local video service, we have a feature of WhatsApp saver. Uh, you can save your favorite uh, uh, image or a video on your WhatsApp directly. We have a cloud service which people use in case they don't have enough uh, storage on their phones uh, to use the MX cloud service. So, and then you have uh, users who come in for a live streaming uh, uh, service which uh, give, enables them to also gift creators. So, the use case of different cohorts is, is very, very uh, uh, depending on their own uh, likabilities. And I think that kind of data is what we actually analyze on a daily, hourly, monthly, minute basis, right? So I think it gives us real-time insight for us to make the changes to product, make changes to UI, UX, make changes to content uh, offerings, 
and any other newer product launches that we design is all backed by a humongous amount of A-B testing that we do with our consumer cohorts. Absolutely, but also to gain attention, you need to make your audiences aware of what's going on and that's where push notifications come into focus. So let's get down to the brass tacks, uh, Porosh. I believe in the earlier years, MX Player never sent push notifications and then things change. So I want to understand what drove that change and especially say associations with uh, players like uh, Clevertrap, how does, how does that work out in terms of stitching together user journeys and ensuring personalization at scale? Let us know about that. So yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when we began uh, uh, our journey, right, we were a small app trying to grow. Uh, the focus was always about getting new users to kind of come to our platform, uh, the focus was already uh, was always on trying to get people to download our app and then uh, and then grow from there, right? As it's been now, I mean, we are one of the biggest apps. Like like you've correctly mentioned, one in two people in India have our app. So now our focuses have migrated, have moved to actually keeping these users with us, engaging with them, and ensuring that they keep coming back for multiple services that we give, right? So we have multiple products that that they can use. Uh, so yes, Clevertap has been a big revolution for us. What, what we've been able to do with Clevertap is uh, we can segment our users in multiple different ways. Just a small example, right, about uh, funnel improvement through Clevertap. So uh, if a user comes to our platform and let's say uh, a percentage of those users want to subscribe to us, but there's a journey in the subscription. They have to register, uh, they have to uh, give us their details, and then they have to subscribe from there. If there are drop-offs within, uh, within these funnels, uh, we can use Clevertap to actually see what users are dropping off at what level. And we can automate our notifications to users to ensure that we are getting them back on our platform. Another use case is uh, there are 10 different people who uh, use or who watch the same kind of content with us. But the time that they interact with notifications would be very different. So although they're watching the same content, they actually interact at different points with notifications. So Clevertap has features where we can do, uh, it's called send time optimization. So we can actually do send time optimizations for our users basis when they actually interact with notifications. So there are multiple different layering that, that we can do on Clevertap, which has helped us in now expanding our journey from acquiring users to getting new users on board to now keeping them coming back to us and then retaining the people and reducing our churn. So right. as a company, we've moved from, uh, from that small, small company mentality to now keeping our users, keeping our, uh, keeping our market share and kind of growing from there. All right. And taking that forward, what have been some of the say side effects or halo effects of effectively targeting brand communication to a variety of users. Nikhil mentioned 56 minutes of time being spent on average. That's a huge amount. So what have been some of the side effects of this partnership? So this, the, the main side effects of, of this, right? I mean, basis our main proposition of, of video player, we, we went into OTT. Basis our, uh, so those two are our big propositions that we offer to our users. Uh, basis those, we have been able to grow our other smaller products that we have, gaming, live, music and, and other things within within our app also right so uh, by by ensuring that we are sending notifications by ensuring that we are uh, recalling our users for some of the other proposition we are able to grow other parts of our business also which 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 is amazing for us right i mean we want users to come back to us we want users to consider us to be the one stop solution for all their entertainment needs and uh, yeah this this actually helps us out in that for sure I, I'd just like to add, you know, uh, if you if you define scale, uh, it's not just the users. If you look at MX Player, we are the only Indian app to have achieved a billion plus downloads on the Play Store. Mm. And we are in the August company of some global tech giants. And there are only, I, I, I think, about 18, 20 others who are along with us in that place. So I think one is that. Second is we do not, on the back of the organic downloads that we have, we do not spend on consumer acquisition. Mm. Uh, our use case for a service like Clevertap is for improving engagement, mm -hmm. improving our overall watch time and the app visits that we have on, on the platform. So, uh, Porush and team essentially drive different kinds of cohorts to see which are the areas and which are the users that we want to really look at retapping into who are spending lesser time and how do we create more value for the users who are anyway spending a lot of more time 
uh, in the different offers that we have uh, on the table. And that's also a sign of maturity. While many of your competitors might focus on, say, off-platform content discovery and acquisition of users, here you are really focusing on retaining users. And in a sense, it's word of mouth, right? If I enjoy the experience, I'm going to make sure that uh, you know the others around me know absolutely. about it. Absolutely, absolutely. And that also brings up another aspect, which is monetization. And any conversation in OTT cannot be left behind without talking about monetization. Now, you've introduced a premium subscription tier, which is MX Gold. And you were free earlier. And that was your calling card, in a sense. Great content, which is available for free. So how did that shift to going to premium tier and making it a sort of a hybrid approach change the leadership thinking around, say, customer retention and pricing innovation? Firstly, the, the model is uh, per se uh, of two kinds. Mm -hmm. One is we have our bedrock award model, which is the advertising layer, which uh, forms a large part of our uh, monetization. What we've essentially done very recently is introduced a direct-to-consumer monetization opportunity, which is what you define as a premium layer. Uh, we've done that on our OTT service. Uh, predominantly because of the feedback that we got from our loyal customers that uh, they are willing to pay uh, for an ad-free experience or an experience that allows them to download certain pieces of content. So that was uh, uh, an insight that we got from a lot of user feedback. Uh, of course, we tested different price points. Uh, we started off at a 299 level. Uh, very recently, we've taken that up to 499 and we've seen uh, no drop Mm. in the daily run rate of uh, subscriptions. So uh, there is a willingness of uh, a cohort of users to pay. Uh, the price point is essentially uh, something that is, is up for innovation uh, as, the, as the journey progresses. And I think on the OTT side alone, uh, AWARD and SWARD is going to be uh, the way forward. And we've heard of a lot of other OTT players, global giants now moving into the so-called AWARD service. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's clearly because the opportunity is so large uh, and with more and more ad dollars moving from traditional television to digital video, I think uh, uh, we are already up there in the forefront uh, as far as our scale is concerned. The third layer on the direct-to-consumer monetization also was to create opportunities for users to uh, transact. Uh, and so we've got uh, the live streaming business, which allows users to you know, buy coupons and coins and gift uh, them back to the creators. And I think uh, transactional monetization is also going to catch a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, you know, players like us, because if you don't want to pay the $4.99 for the entire year, you can probably play a, a lesser price point for a particular piece of uh, content that you want to consume for that at that particular time. So I think uh, there is going to be a lot of action in, in, in this space. And uh, we are very happy with the way our direct monetization business is currently going. Absolutely. Those little you know pockets of magic which users experience. And they'll be willing to pay for it. And I believe you're one of the first players to also have Watch Now, Pay Later, as I mentioned earlier. So you are looking at innovation and pricing also as a significant part yeah, of this. I think uh, we were the, f I, I can probably say we were the first ones to create, even, even before BNPL launched. Uh, we were the first ones to create this opportunity of watch now pay later and uh, we saw a great amount great response on that uh, so that continues to become the forefront but in the journey we also also discovered that there is appetite for users to pay hmm. uh, and uh, price points uh, is something like I mentioned earlier we will keep innovating uh, to see uh, how that we can improve the yield going forward. All right. Another one of your interviews which I read where you have spoken about the growth levers here at MX Player. You mentioned two key factors there. One was the interactivity aspects, which of course comes in through games and you have short videos uh, coming in as well. And you have influence because MX Player is such an established brand. You can sort of bring in a lot of the influencers to, to kind of deliver content for you. But now with say Takatak being hived up, what are your plans for UGC going forward? In some way, our live streaming business is uh, 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 in the UGC space. Uh, we are currently curating content at, at this point. There is a, a you know, list of white labeled creators that we work with uh, who come and engage on the platform. Uh, there is a product innovation which is in the offing. Uh, it's a little premature for me to put it out right now, but uh, 
it is in the UGC space, which we will, uh, you know, eventually in the couple in the next couple of months, we'll be announcing it. And I think these two layers will uh, create an opportunity for us to be very well established in the UGC space, uh, but not in the short video space. So let me just uh, you know define that very clearly. And I think with uh, the last three years, what we've what we've understood and what we've what we've seen is that the creator ecosystem has now become a proper industry. Hmm. And uh, you know, with normal UGC creators who are now migrating or progressing to become PUGC creators, which is professionally generated content creators, are uh, more than uh, uh, 15 million creators across the country. Hmm. And that opportunity is something that we want to tap into. Uh, and I believe that uh, there's humongous amount of talent out there uh, and it just doesn't restrict itself to short video. It, it lends itself to a lot more uh, in the offing. Are you in awe of the change which has happened? 15 million creators in just a few years. Who would have thought eight, ten years ago, right? Absolutely. And I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the digital ecosystem has enabled this change. And it has given opportunity for not just the creators, but also users who see a great amount of value to spend more and more time uh, consuming that kind of content, and uh, I, 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 and I think you know, and you know, uh, I must mention that YouTube was the uh, the first in 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 this ecosystem. Uh, the new format that came into play created uh, uh, the opportunity to create became more easier. So uh, it just brought down the accessibility of content creation, and I think that gave rise to and a lot of legs to uh, you know any normal person on the street to pick up the phone and create and put something out and he got an audience for it. So it's giving a lot of encouragement. Uh, we ourselves were uh, a part of that journey with MX Takatak and uh, we saw a great amount of success with the way we designed our platform. And uh, I think what we have in the in the offing is, is, is very exciting uh, and we will announce that in a couple of months. All right, looking forward to it. But it's great to see it's not just democratization of content consumption, it's democratization of content creation as well. And taking forward what Nikhil said about the digital ecosystem enabling this change, let's also look at how the digital ecosystem changed MX Player itself, right, and made it more resilient and from that perspective from a growth marketing perspective i want to understand whether the fact that mx player is a super app is that its ultimate customer resilience factor because you have everything and anything on your platform whether as i mentioned games or music or shows and you know you read reports and the narrative is changing that OTT, the OTT universe itself is ripe for disruptions because consumers are kind of getting fatigued by going across various platforms for their various needs. Your thoughts on this, Parash? As the OTT industry is changing, as it's evolving, there is a lot of opportunity for uh, users to actually come to one destination for all their entertainment needs, right? And the needs of users and consumers are also changing all the time. So we are uh, an app which for a user now gives uh, video content, it can keep their files with them, uh, they can play games. So it's, it's, a, it's a solution for users for all their entertainment needs. So I think this is a great factor for MX Player actually to get in users in the door, right? I mean, you want to consume content, you want to play games, uh, you want to uh, interact with uh, creators that we, that we have, all of it is possible. So it just opens the door, in fact, for us for multiple more things. It also opens the door for users to move from one service to another as well, right? I mean, uh, a person who watches uh, entertainment might also be interested and are also interested in playing games, right? So we are that solution for actually coming and consuming all of those things. So uh, rather than being available as multiple different apps, multiple different destinations, I think this is a great factor for, uh, for getting in users. And that's one of the reasons why we're getting huge amount of organic installs on a daily basis, right? Uh, we would be one of the, I, I feel, the only companies which would not be thinking about user acquisition. It's all about retention because of the multiple services that we have for, for users as well. That's great to hear. Now, in addition to bringing India to the world, you're also bringing the world to India. I checked out the Videsi section. So let me ask you about it, Nikhil. How do you plan to get the mass audience hooked to international shows? Well, we've already got them hooked. Uh, Videsi is one of our most successful uh, categories of content where we've got content from 12 different languages, global languages, which we dub in 
five to six Indian languages and we have them on offer. So from Turkish to Korean to Japanese to American to European, everything that has legs of traveling and connects with the cultural preferences of our users in India, uh, we acquired those uh, those shows and we've got like multi-year deals with many content providers and we dub them in uh, about four to five languages based on each show's uh, you know the 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 content category that it's in and uh, what we've also done very uh, efficiently is that we've evolved our dubbing style hmm. to suit the preferences of the mass consumer That's interesting. and uh, uh, it's taken us about three years to crack the real style of the language uh, as well as the dialect to really look at what is most mass appealing and that is a key driver for us uh, to drive engagement on on Videsi. And we've just scratched the surface, as I mentioned, picture a big baki here. So there's lots more growth coming in and we all wish you the best in terms of taking MX Player forward to greater heights. But I won't leave you there. I'll get some lessons in excellence before we wrap up our conversation. So the first question to you on that, Nikhil, is that the biggest lesson that you have learned in the time that you've been at MX Player in terms of uh, understanding customer journeys, understanding customer retention, especially as those big leaps came about. Your thoughts? So I think uh, one is that at every different place that I have been with, uh, you have a different challenge of sorts. Uh, and uh, the, the key is to you know, stay focused. I think a lot of times uh, uh, leaders tend to get too delved into crisis management. And I think for me, uh, one key, key aspect is that we have a very efficient team that we uh, have entrusted and empowered to take decisions on uh, uh, certain key aspects of driving the business so that the leadership can focus on larger growth areas. And I think that is one of the key aspects that I have driven my, uh, my overall journey as a leader uh, is to have the right kind of teams and you know, well empowered to take decisions. And I think uh, 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 two is that it's an extremely dynamic environment. Mm. Uh, it's, what you see today is not going to be what you get tomorrow. So you have to be ready for change and you have to be ready for letting go of things that you have probably built over time without uh, uh, you know, getting emotional about uh, certain things. I mean, uh, Takadak was a fine example of a lot of labor of love that we did to build that business. Uh, but we found an opportunity and so uh, it was a decision that uh, we took uh, and a lot of teams that were working on Takadak were very, very emotional about it. But the fact that is, uh, is that we created value out of that business. And I think uh, uh, while we should be extremely passionate and committed, uh, which we all are, uh, I think uh, I'd like to draw a fine line between passion and emotion. So uh, <laughs> that's the leadership uh, lesson that I can give probably. Have a fine line between passion and emotion. I think we can make a t-shirt out of that. <laughs> but uh, before I let you go, one last question. A whole lot of our viewers are startup founders and entrepreneurs. So what would you advise them in terms of taking that big leap in business? You know, in my, in my last five or six years, I've interacted with a lot of founders. And I think there's a lot of fine talent uh, that we have in, in the country. Uh, my, my encouragement to them would be to uh, hang in there for the longer term. Uh, there will be a lot of hiccups with every business, and a lot of challenges with every business. Uh, you know, you have consumers, your funding dries up. Uh, you, you have funding, but you don't have consumers. So every different kind of business grapples with different kinds of uh, uh, challenges. And I think uh, I would encourage uh, you know, founders to have a 20-year vision, a long-range plan of what value they want to create for the consumer. Uh, and that will keep them gr growing to achieve the, the scale that they want to. All right. Always think long term. That's the view coming in. On that note, Nikhil Porush, thank you so much for speaking with us and sharing with us the blueprint of how MX Player effectively managed to retain its customers even in the face of exponential growth. Thank you so much for that. And with that, we come to the end of this episode of ET Brand Equity presents The Big Leap. 
powered by Clevertap. I hope you enjoyed listening to these leaders and their growth stories. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. And we will be back again with the next episode with two more stories. Till then, this is your host, Gautam Srinivasan, signing off. Have a great day.